Imagine this story. There was once a family, father, mother, and two sons. A great pandemic came upon the earth and millions of people's lives were affected, changed or they were dying. The mother got sick and was hospitalized. Then the father and finally the older son. The younger son never got the virus. In fact, though he was in close contact with his whole family, he never got sick at all. The doctors were astounded and took samples of his blood. They found that the younger son had the antidote that could kill the virus no matter what stage it was. There was a huge outcry and the doctors asked the parents to allow them to draw their son's blood and inject as many people as possible so that they could have their systems, in their systems, the ability to produce the same antidote. The father rubbing his head and eyes wide open asked, how much blood? All. We need all his blood, the doctor said. Their son had to die to save the world. I wanted to tell you this made up story because that's basically what happened with Jesus for all of us to be saved. All his blood had to be sacrificed. His life had to end for us to have life. For us to live life to the fullest and to live after death, all of him had to die. We too have to show gratefulness and respect for what was done by Jesus. Jesus deserves our respect. He gave all. He didn't give half or some. He gave all. He didn't complain, didn't mumble or criticize. He didn't have to do it all, but he did it because all was needed. Not only his life, he gave his reputation, his sin-free nature to take on your sinful disease. When we realize that though he died, he rose again, and that dying was not final for him, and could be the same for us, we will understand the magnitude of his love for us, what it took for him to hang on that cross. He tells us how to remember what he did in Matthew 26, 17 to 30, the Last Supper. Always remember, don't ever forget what he did. So by loving others and respecting others, we are showing respect to Jesus. Jesus died because of his great love for us. How then can we who claim to love Jesus not love what he loves with all his life? People, meaning your neighbor, the beggars, the thin, the fat, the loud, the happy, sad, all people, he loves them all. We need to love each other, enough to tell each other and everything about Jesus so that more people hear the truth and accept this precious antidote. Repent. It doesn't matter what you have done. Ask him to forgive you and confess with your mouths. We may turn away from him or even run away from him and hurt him. He's just waiting and watching faithfully for you to ask him to forgive. He is waiting. Now that he has risen, we too again can rise from the dead because we have been saved through his sacrifice. Death is not final. It's just the beginning of a new life. He made it possible for us to have life after. We need to show respect to Jesus, who showed love for us even though we were not even born yet. Make a choice to take the antidote for the sickness of sin, and you too will live. God's plan for us is for us to have a happy ending, live life to the fullest. What happened in Eden needed to be turned around so that we too could make the choice to see Jesus as alive and resurrected and not be in despair of hopelessness. Sharing this with others so that they too can have the antidote is showing that it wasn't all for nothing, but that more and more people can find a happy ending through Jesus. Matthew 28 verse 19 gives us the formula of how this must be done by baptism. And who must be baptized? The people we meet at school, at different settings, telling them the truth that it took all of Jesus to make a way for them to receive this happy ending. So I hope you see that there's no other way to receive the salvation except through Jesus. Choose the right way and be in the right place when your time comes to pass from this earth.